Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I am here today to talk to you about not just one product, but a range of products that I've just bought into the shop, um, which I truly believe are an excellent range of vodkas. Um, but also, if you buy a bottle of them or something else that I put together in conjunction with it, um, you will also be helping some people who are in very, very dire need at the moment. Um, so I have just received stock of a range of vodkas from Nemirov, uh, which is a, a Ukrainian vodka. Um, and as you're no doubt aware, currently going on in Ukraine is an invasion from Russia, which is displacing a huge amount of people. Um, there are refugees that are all over Europe. And um, I've brought the Nemirov, Nemirov range in. Um, and basically any 70 cl bottle that is sold, uh, all the profits from those will uh, be donated to the Disasters Emergency Committee Ukraine Appeal. Um, but there are six in the range. We have um, the Deluxe Vodka, the Rested and Barrel, the Honey Pepper, the Burning Pear, the Bold Orange, and the Wild Cranberry. And I'll tell you about those individually just in a second. But because there's six of them in there, and the sample boxes that I have will hold six miniatures, I have also put to together uh, a pack that I've called the Spirit of Ukraine. And inside this box is six 30 mil samples of the entire range. That's if I don't drop it on the floor and smash it. So the box itself with these samples in uh, is retailing for 20 pounds. Um, but five pound of that 20 pound will also be donated to the DEC deck, I presume you call it, uh, the DEC Ukraine appeal. So five pound from those box, box sales, as well as all the profits um, from the bottle sales will be donated to the Ukraine appeal. So let me just give you a quick rundown in terms of the range that they've got. So entry level is the deluxe, which is uh, 1999 a bottle. The rest of the range are all 2499. So this is basically their standard vodka. You might also notice apparently Nemirov is the official uh, vodka for the UFC. Not really my thing, but if you're into the UFC, then okay, I get it. Um, but this is a, I'm not going to try them on camera because it's early in the morning and I'm not drinking six vodkas for a video because I've got the rest of the day to get through. But I have tried these in order to do the tasting notes for the website and also to make sure that they are actually genuinely very good. So it's a grain-based vodka. Um, the distillery is uh, kind of roughly in the, the center of, of Ukraine, kind of slightly towards the Moldova um, border. It's about 160 kilometers, uh, 160 miles kind of south-ish um, of Kiev. Um, and it's named after a town which is Nimiriv. Um, and it's essentially an Anglic Anglicized, the Anglic, whatever it is. It's um, uh, making, making it sound more Western. There's a word that I cannot say, Anglicization, whatever. Um, so it uh, dates back to 1872. So it's, uh, Ukraine is actually one of the largest producers of alcohol and spirits in the world. Um, so this has a lot of history behind it. And it's a grain-based vodka that I think you're using botanicals as well. There's a soft, slightly floral note, but slightly fruity. There's hints of particularly apple, sort of slightly softened green apple. It's a little bit crisp. There is a little bit of a bite to it, but it's not, um, it's not a peppery bite. It's more like the, the sharpness of a biting into a Granny Smith's apple, but it's not overpowering and it doesn't taste like an apple vodka. It's just that hint there that is, is actually adding a little bit of interest. So this is a, it's a good sipping vodka, not as good as the rest of the barrel, I'll get to that in a second, but it's a really good vodka for using in actually vodka forward cocktails. So if you're doing a vodka martini and a sort of a dry vodka martini, this will work really well because there is, it, it's, it's crisp and it's clean, but it's got something extra about it, which is going to make a martini really, really interesting. Really good vodka for a Vespa, really good because you get a little bit of that softness that will complement the gin and also, if you're using it properly, the Cokie Americano, that sort of warmer note that comes through on the Vespa. So as an entry-level vodka, compare this to, say, Smirnoff, Stolly, that sort of thing. Bags of character in this. This really is. It's very interesting trying this next to Smirnoff, and that kind of gives me an idea for a video run that might turn up shortly. So really, really good entry-level. We then move to the rested in barrel, where this spends a short amount of time in. Now, they say oak casks. So I don't know if it's virgin oak. I have done a bit of research to try and find out exactly what casks they are, and unfortunately can't actually get the exact details. 
but it's oak aged. What's interesting is it's, it's still coming out clear, so I, I'm fairly certain they will be filtering it to kind of get it back down as clear as possible. Um, you know, normally an oak aged, maybe not this dark, but an oak aged vodka, you would expect to have some kind of color almost halfway between these two, but they have bottled it clear. So it's been filtered, but the deluxe is crisp, it's clean, it's got that fruitiness. The rested in barrel is softer, feels warmer, and what was kind of apple on the deluxe ends up becoming almost like poached pear and sort of baked apple. It's lovely and warming. It's an amazing sipping vodka. And normally I'll say, kind of particularly with the sipping vodka, is put it in the freezer uh, and pour it from the freezer because you get a slightly thicker, um, thicker feeling spirit and a richer mouthfeel. This already has that rich mouthfeel. So I, I, I would almost say, don't put this in the freezer and pour it from there. Just keep it in the fridge. Keep it chilled, but not too chilled because there is already a lot of complexity going on in here that freezing it will actually dampen it down slightly. It will, it will kind of, it will be too cold. You want this chilled, uh, and I wouldn't recommend this over ice as well because the dilution of the ice is, is actually gonna knock what subtle complexity there is in there. But it's a stunning sipping vodka. It's almost a waste to be using in cocktails. You know, the vodka and coke all that lot, you'll be fine with the deluxe. It will absolutely be wasted. Um, it is a really, really good, refined, top draw vodka. I'm really, really impressed with that. I think it's superb. Then we move on to the flavors. So we have um, a honey pepper uh, flavored vodka here. Uh, now, according to the blurb, uh, based on here, it's based on a recipe dating back to the 16th century. Um, and we have natural honey and chili pepper, not black pepper, but chili pepper here. Now, you might be thinking, oh, honey pepper, is it gonna be too sweet? Which some honey flavored drinks can be. Is it, is it very spicy? Is it very kind of like, and I've had certain chili vodkas and things like that that are just, they go full on with the chili. You, your mouth feels really hot. It's like re heating, re eating a really hot curry or spicy meal. You can't really taste anything else. What's good on this is they rain everything back in, but you still get the flavors. So the honey is akin to very runny, very runny, quite light, almost manuka honey. There's a slight floral note to this. It's there, but it's not obvious. It's not sweet. This is not a, a liqueur by any stretch of the imagination. And the chili pepper that's there is, it's more of a prickle on the tongue. It's like a prickle on the tip of your tongue and then a little bit at the back of your throat as you swallow. But again, it's not overpowering. It's, it's subtle, but not lost. Um, and not kind of too reined in that you can't actually taste it. You, it's not that you have to go looking for it, but it kind of catches you off guard. You're thinking, well, it's not really that hot. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, actually, no, there's a bit of a tingle on the tongue there. Oh, there is a bit of heat. So it's really, really nicely balanced and it does work well in cocktails. It's, it's quite an interesting thing to kind of use with, again, short cocktails, kind of like vodka um, forward cocktails particularly. It's a bit of a twist on a Vesper, it, it sort of goes, it makes things interesting, but I don't think it'll be to everybody's taste. It's not really a kind of martini vodka. Again, sips really, really well, but it's not an overpowering honey pepper. Now, there are two other flavors where they use the honey pepper as then a base. So what we have next is the burning pear. And the reason it's called burning pear is because they're using the honey pepper vodka and then they are adding fresh pear flavorings. So. What, what's really nice with this is that honey and the pear work really well. That's kind of a, a, a natural combination. So you get that fresh pear juice feel. You know, it's not quite apple -y. It's It's not, it's a bit more forward than uh, the deluxe is. But you then get that little bit of gentle spice at the end of it. That kind of, again, that prickle of heat on the tongue. And it lifts the finish. It makes it much more interesting rather than just being, it's a honey and pear vodka. You swallow, you drink and then it kind of finishes off. That prickle at the finish, again, makes things interesting. So they do talk about doing this in a sidecar or a spicy mule, and it does work particularly well with a, a ginger ale as opposed to a fiery ginger beer. Fiery ginger beer, it just kind of, you lose the honeyness, the, the heat of a, of a spicy ginger beer, you get more of the heat, it's kind of overpowering, it, it just kind of gets lost. But if you use a slightly sweeter ginger ale, you get a little bit of that fruitiness coming through as well. And again, with lemon juice in a sidecar, does work brilliantly. You get that nice sour note, you get a little bit of heat, but you get the fruitiness underlying as well. We then move on to the bold orange, which again, honey pepper is the, honey pepper vodka is the base. It's a lovely fresh orange feel in this though. 
It's really kind of like Florida juicy oranges. It's really, really refreshing to start with. And then again, that heat kind of comes through. Now they on this talk about um, mix with orange juice and ginger ale for the perfect cocktail. And I get that, but to be honest, I'm really enjoying drinking this just neat chilled again out of the fridge. It's a lovely kind of, it's almost like a cocktail on its own. Um, so, you know, you could really kind of play around with literally just kind of stirring with ice, putting it in a cocktail glass, giving it to somebody that doesn't know that this is out of the same bottle. So dilute it with a bit of ice, get it nicely chilled, serve it in a martini glass and go, there you go, I've made this orange vodka chili cocktail and they won't realize that you've literally just poured it from the same bottle. Really refreshing. I love the juiciness that's in this. I think it's absolutely wonderful. And then finally we have the wild cranberry. Now the honey pepper is not used in this. So this is using the deluxe as the base and then they are adding essentially just concentrated cherry juice and that's pretty much it. A brilliant balance between sweet and tart. Cranberries can be sometimes too tart, um, but other times they're not tart enough. You don't get that tang, but you don't want it to be too sour. And they've got the balance absolutely spot on here. Really, really good just with a glug in champagne, just with soda water, lemonade, that sort of thing. Um, they talk about sparkling water and fresh lime juice, and lime works really well in this too. Cosmopolitan, perfect. I mean, just add some lime juice. Again, pour it in a martini glass, add some lime juice. You've got a banging Cosmopolitan, and you haven't really had to do much to, to make it. So all in all, a really, really good range. I'm so impressed with the quality of it. I'm kind of relieved as well because I got them in on spec because I wanted to do something to help the Ukrainian people. But fortunately, the vodkas are absolutely fantastic. And I'm so, so impressed, particularly with that rested and barrel. I think that is absolutely amazing stuff as a sipping vodka. So the 70 CLs, we've got $19.99 for the Deluxe, $24.99 for the rest of the range. All profits from the sales of those 70 CL bottles will be donated to the DEC Ukraine Appeal. And we've got the Spirit of Ukraine box, which will give you six 30 mil samples of the entire range. It's 20 pound for the box, but five pound from the sale of every box will again go to the DEC Ukraine Appeal. And then you can try these, and if you like them, you can buy the bottles, you can enjoy some really good spirits, but you will also be helping a lot of people who are in great need right now. So if you're wanting to buy the box, or you're wanting to buy the 70 CL bottles, you can purchase it in store. If you're anywhere near Howden in East Yorkshire, just off the M62, junction 37, I think. I should probably know that. Uh, or you can go to www.spiritspecialist.com. Uh, we have nationwide UK delivery, so you can order online and I will post it to you um, and you can enjoy some fantastic spirits. Um, so that's me done. I shall see you in the next video. Cheers.